Hi everyone, just a quick video on the uh, rear parking sensor uh, and how to test it if you think yours is faulty. So if you're getting a warning light on the dashboard saying that your rear parking sensors are not working, then this is the most likely cause of that fault. So um, what I've got in front of me is a, a typical sort of 2010 or thereabouts sensor called an ultrasonic one. And it simply sends sonic waves out, uh, bounces off the object you're reversing against and then bounces back. And for you as a driver, these are the types that bleep uh, and bleak faster and faster the closer and closer you get to an object so it's the ultrasonic type so uh, as you can see I put on the board it's a three pin so sometimes the three pins are in a line and sometimes they're in this triangle shape this one here hopefully you can see with the light I've got here in winter uh, is a three pin triangle shape so uh, what's happening inside it well we've got the three pins there on the board so this bottom left one uh, numbered one on the casing uh, is the supply voltage which goes from the battery to the sensor and the one at the top is the earth return. So that's the bit that grounds the electricity on that circuit. And then number three is the trigger. So the trigger is the signal coming from the ECU, uh, telling it to send out the ultrasonic waves. And then the same pin is uh, receiving that ultrasonic uh, bounce back and going to the ECU and being converted into a distance uh, for for you to, to know how far the object is. Uh, so. The way we're going to test it then is we're going to test the circuit inside here. I've had somebody go out around the back of the car and put their hand in front of the sensors uh, to see which ones are uh, beeping and which ones are not. So I think I've got two here, uh, one that works and one that's faulty. So first of all, I'm going to show you one that works. I've got my multimeter and I've set it to ohms and I've set it to 200k. So it's quite high uh, resistance in this sensor anyway, even when they're working properly. So uh, I've got my two leads. I've obviously got the black one in the com and the red one in the one that's got the ohm sign on it as well. So always a good idea to cross your multimeter uh, probes just to make sure it's zeroing and it's calibrated, which it is. So all I'm gonna do then is bridge between pin number one and pin number two, which is the uh, the ones, the two on the right hand side. Bear with me if I go off camera, because they're very small pins. I do have crocodile clips, but I can't get into them uh, because they're that small. So I'm just gonna put it on the bench here for a moment. In fact, I'll tilt you guys down. I'm going to put it on the bench and I'm going to go from number two to number one. And then it's going to help if I bring the multimeter in at this point, isn't it? So two to one. So again, at 200k, so 200,000 ohms, 169,000 ohms. So that's a high resistance, but these sensors is expected to be high resistance. So I'm going to try the broken one now. So obviously the two probes aren't connected. There's no circuit there, so you get a one. So what I'm expecting to see is that one stays in place, even though I go on these two pins again. Check again. Nothing. So yeah, so this sensor, the circuit inside's failed. And with the other one here, it's a complete circuit and it's showing resistance. So I know the wiring in that one is good. That's the one I now need to go and uh, buy a new one for. They're about 10 or 15 pounds normally uh, to replace. They're quite a generic common uh, sensor. So although this has come out of a 2010 Honda, these often fit uh, loads of different vehicle makes and makes and models. So again, the ultrasonic type. I hope that makes sense and I'll see you in the next one.